Okay, I want to do a video about Google core updates and some of the different SEO updates that they've done with really a focus on the update that everyone's talking about that everyone's been talking about for the last year is the helpful content update that was actually initially released in 2022. In August of 2022 was the first helpful content update. We had a product reviews update. We had a December 2022 helpful content update. And then the September 2023 helpful content update was basically when websites all across the internet just got destroyed by Google. So the reason why I'm bringing up this today is it's been about a full year since it has been released, and I just want to go over everything I've seen from the websites that have been impacted, uh, my own websites, and then some of the other larger websites than mine that have also been impacted that have much better content than mine do. So basically, I noticed this. I own beachfronttocore.com. The website is actually currently down in the process of I don't changing everything about it, but I worked on it for a while trying to recover my earnings, which just never recovered. So basically, I was getting consistently, and over time, I was actually getting more traffic than this previously, but I was in around the 300 to 500 clicks a day kind of range and started to see an increase. This actually coincided with one of the core updates in August of 2023, and then just saw traffic drop off a cliff, basically starting right when that update started. So they announced it on the 14th. It's like we saw a little spike and then drop, drop, and just never been able to recover this. I worked on this website. I had another similar website. I would say the main thing about this website, it is was clearly just fully an affiliate website. So part of me always knew that I would probably end up getting hurt by this because if you search something, and this is what I focused on was beach decor, thing, things you would put in a beach home. So basically, if you search beach bedding sets, I could kind of see the writing on the wall that not only were we seeing a ton more of these sponsored listings and the results, you could see last 90 days, 197 impressions, average position 59. I used to be on the first page for the specific keyword. So if we scroll down here, and this is exactly what I saw. So you have sponsored ads at the very top. As we scroll down here, we started to get into popular products. So part of me saw the writing on the wall and was just like, okay, I'm, it's going to be difficult for me to actually rank high for some of these keywords. But you could see here some of the different stores. So Levtex Home, Amazon. So trying to compete with some of these massive retailers was difficult. And then there's still some niche websites that are doing pretty well. And the main thing that they have that I didn't was they had a legitimate e-commerce website. Now they may be doing drop shipping because a lot of these are very similar to what you find on Amazon and some of these other some of these other retailers as well. But I started to notice over time that. I was being outranked by Etsy and by Wayfair and Amazon and Kirkland's and sometimes Target. So basically, I realized that my business model was probably broken long term for Google because it's going to be hard to compete with Walmart and Wayfair unless I had a legitimate e-commerce website like some of these other ones here. So like Southern Tide, if we scroll down, Coastal Compass, all of these, if you see right here, they have legitimate pricing, they have delivery, they have return. So the very first thing, and Karen's Beach House, another very big one. So basically, what I noticed this starting to happen of my website was losing some rankings, and then I was just kind of staying consistent no matter what I did. My website was a pure affiliate website. So no e-commerce store whatsoever. What I will tell people is I do believe that during the helpful content update, so this was released the First Google helpful content update was announced in 2022. The second one was September of 2023. During this helpful content update, I do believe Google came out with a blacklist where basically, I don't know if it was manual or if it was any website that's getting hit by this helpful content update is not going to recover properly. And if you have a website that was hit by the helpful content update, it's been a full year of data that we have where I'm not saying give up on your website, but I've heard stories of people basically saying, we have taken, like if I have beachfronttocore.com, I create a website, you know, coastalfrontdecor.com or whatever we want to call it and put very similar content and those would actually rank higher than the existing website. So that's why I do believe there is some type of blacklist put on some of these websites. But you can go into SEMrush, you can go into to Ahrefs. I have SpyFu open here. One of the websites that's gotten the most publicity from this is retrododo.com. The owner has been very outspoken on Twitter and I agree with what he says or X, whatever you want to call it. I agree with what he says and he's actually had a meeting with Google, but he has has like a legitimate, really nice website. So news, reviews, and this is one of the main things that's gotten crushed are reviews. So Google has talked about they want firsthand experience, they want perspectives, they want people that are actually using things, which makes sense, but it doesn't then make sense why when you search something like best wearable fitness tracker, you have Forbes coming up, you have, and you can say here, okay, this is the seven best fitness tractors tested by a personal trainer. A lot of times they have articles that are ranking on the very first page, very high in Google where 
It doesn't really always make sense why they're ranking at the very top. PC Mag, The Verge, Wired. So it makes sense that some of these are actually ranking. But what's happened is if you're not one of these massive websites that has basically been whitelisted by Google, then no matter what you do, if you wrote about wearable fitness forever, you're just not going to rank. So there's a really good example of another one here. It's mynewmicrophone.com. They were getting a ton of traffic. They have like thousands of blog posts. If you come into audio here and you can see amplifiers, audio effects processes, audio plugins, they have, and obviously there's advertisements here. I'll go over why I think Google did this at the end of the video, but you can see 11 best power amplifier brands in the world. Receiver or amplifier, which one should I buy? So these are all helpful to me, helpful content, because if I'm researching something about an amplifier, I'm probably going to have some of these questions. And truthfully, I know nothing about this anyway. But if we take this website and we put this into SpyFu, same exact way, you'll see, okay, they started dropping. And you can see right here in September, so the last 12 months, they actually kept a little bit of rankings. And then during the, it looks like the March, they released another update in March that hurt a lot of websites, came back, down, back up. They're probably somewhere in this range pretty consistently, but you could see you go from over 100,000 organic clicks where you're probably earning a good amount from advertising, from affiliate offers, and you're creating helpful content for people. Even if it's Google saying, okay, this isn't as helpful as what Forbes does or what some of these other ones do, it just doesn't really make sense the way Google has ranked everything. Best wearable fitness tracker to me, it should Forbes should not rank for this. And when you go to Forbes, they have so many, even mattress and sleep, home and fashion, fashion, kids and baby gear. It's like Forbes has just become the the website that's been allowed to do this. But so many websites that did this very well got destroyed during the helpful content update. Now, there are some questions as to why Google did this. And basically, I have two main theories. Number one is you've probably seen already Reddit just dominates Google now. So you search best wearable fitness tracker, we scroll past the ads, we get to Reddit right here, we keep scrolling down, we have a second Reddit listing on the first page. So that used to be something Google kind of tried not to do, but you could see a second Reddit listing on the first page. Basically anything where you're searching, I don't think Reddit ranks for beach bedding sets, although I wouldn't be surprised if they do eventually. Anytime you're searching for pretty much anything, you're gonna find a ton related to Reddit. So things to do in Seattle. This is one of the first things I saw about the helpful content update was somebody who was like, my, I used to rank at the very top spot for this specific search term. And over time, I think they're not even on the first page anymore. I'll show you that example. But one of the things that they saw was that, okay, Seattle, th the Reddit here was ranking the highest. And if you went into the page, a lot of the answers were jokes. A lot of them weren't overly helpful. I'm not saying Reddit isn't helpful, and I'm not saying Reddit doesn't have a place on Google, but it also shouldn't come at the expense of people that are spending hours and hours and hours of time to basically put together really good, helpful content that is going to be helpful for people. I mean, if I'm looking up what's the best laptop and somebody says, here's a bunch of different laptops, and depending on your needs, here would be the best one based on somebody who has a, a, a larger budget, based on somebody who has a smaller budget, based on somebody who wants to do gaming, et cetera, et cetera. So these are some of the different things that I saw immediately is you saw Reddit jump up to the very top of Google, and you can see there are, I mean, they have a listing here and then you have all these other listings. We keep scrolling down and you get discussions and forums with even more Reddit there, some Quora. Again, I don't have a problem with Reddit being there. And one of the main reasons Google said they did this is because people do this to search specifically for Reddit. I don't think that necessarily means that Google's like, well, we need to put Reddit on the first page for every single possible thing we can imagine, but that's pretty much what they've done. So Reddit's traffic has absolutely exploded while a bunch of small independent publishers traffic they've seen just go down, down, down over time. So coming back to the things to do in Seattle, now here's another another thing I found. Anyone recover from the helpful content 2023 update? Basically every single person here is like, I have not recovered whatsoever. I wrote, had human rain content. I've done all the things that Google has told me and not, my website just has not recovered. So what I'm telling people is if you had a website like this and you're still kind of hanging on hope and everything like that, I don't have a problem with that. And it's like, you should continuously try to grow your website, but you should also say, okay, there's a chance, a very strong chance that Google basically blacklisted my website. Google has put, they have penalized my website. And even though you don't see it over here where there's manual penalties and things like security and manual actions, which I wish Google would have just told everybody, we are putting a manual action on every single website hit by the helpful content update. So in a follow-up update, if you fix the things we tell you to fix, you can actually start to rank higher again. But Google has basically just said, no, we're, we're just not doing that. 
And if you see a chart that looks like this, then you know that you got hit by the helpful content update and there's not going to be recovery coming because I've just not seen a single example of a website that got hit like this and has had some type of recovery. If there are examples out there, please leave them in the comments section. I just have not seen them. And basically things like Forbes have done perfectly fine and some of these other websites have been perfectly fine for this. And my the last thing I'll go over is the things to do in Seattle. And we went over how Reddit's there. We have visitseattle.org, which again, visitseattle.org. I've worked for these types of designated marketing organizations, and I understand why they rank high, but a lot of times they're just regurgitating what TripAdvisor has. So the 15 best things to do in Seattle, I do think TripAdvisor should rank because they have actual reviews and actual information, US News Travel, Condé Nash Traveler. So there's all these large websites that just really didn't get hit, secretseattle.co. And one of the things that I found is there, there was somebody who put, I have this article and it's things to do in Seattle from a local. So it's somebody who is local to Seattle, and I actually found the article that she had, and here it is, it's travellemming.com. I think she may have done things other than just from Seattle, but the 63 best things to do in Seattle, a locals list, this was ranking first overall, or at least in the first two spots of Google for things to do in Seattle. And it's a really good article. I mean, if we scroll down here, you can see it's been updated in August, so recently updated. If we scroll down here, there are all these different attractions, all these different things to do, pictures, Google Maps listing, links to websites, pricing, a little information about everything. And really the only thing on this website is there's advertisements, which it's fine. I mean, if somebody's writing good, good content, most people don't care that much about advertisements. The main thing that I believe why Google did this is because Google is has done two different things. Number one is Google has a content licensing deal with Reddit to basically train their AI models. So if you read through here, Reddit has struck a deal with Google to make its content available for training the search engine giant's artificial intelligence model. So it says the contract is worth about $60 million per year. So basically what Google is doing is they're saying, well, we'll put Reddit at the very top of the search results for pretty much everything. And if Reddit's at the very top of the search results for everything, then we know that we're going to get more people going there and people also leaving their comments, interacting with this and the Reddit does have a system where people can upvote better comments and Google probably takes information from some of those top comments and basically says, as long as we have some updated information from Reddit, we could always stay on top of pretty much any topic that we, any topic pretty much. So that's one of the main reasons that I think Google has hurt a lot of small business websites is because something like this is harder for Google to train their model on. And over time, Google may say, I don't know if this is the best, this is somebody's unique perspective, which is what we asked for, but I don't know if this is gonna be as useful to us as just simply using Reddit. So that's one reason. The other reason is very simple, and I saw this from Cyrus Shepard on Twitter, and I think I think somebody else posted this, but this is the Google Advertising Revenue Source Mix. This is from Digital Content Next, and you can see right here from Google's own properties, this goes all the way back to Q1 2013, and you can see the, the revenue split between the Google network. So the Google network, the example of that would basically be this advertising advertisement right here on the side of the page is probably part of the Google network. All of these advertisements here, part of the Google network, this part of the Google network. So Google has identified, okay, those clicks are just not making us as much money. And if you go back even further, this, this used to be almost even. So when you go back even further, it's basically, okay, if we can keep people on our owned properties for as long as possible, then what we're able to do is we're able to earn more money. And the main reason for that is because if somebody is searching something, and let's just say somebody comes over here and they search things to do in Seattle. Do we even have any ads here? Probably not. So things to do in Seattle. And if there's advertisements on this page, Google wants people to come into Google, not spend an hour going through an article, but instead go into Google and come back to Google. Go to Google, come back to Google. So I do think Google does have a thing with dwell time where for informative articles, they are perfectly fine with articles where people are staying there for a while. But for things where Google identifies as like a transaction type of keyword, so even something like beach betting sets, they want people to basically go to come to one of these pages and if they don't purchase anything, come right back to Google. Because ultimately what Google wants is for people to click on some of these ads at the very top, some of these search ads here, because that's how Google makes a lot more money. And this click right here may cost, so this says $1.15. This click may right here, let's just say it costs $1.50 for that click. Okay, so then a click on somebody's website on a Google ad is just gonna be a whole lot less than that and basically a fraction of that. 
and those clicks just don't convert as well. So advertisers aren't putting as much money into things like the Google Display Network and some of these other advertising options that Google has. So what's going to keep happening over time is Google wants people to stay on Google. That's why there is Google Travel. That's why Google has all of these different, even AI overviews on Google. It's like Google wants you to stay on Google and they've at a certain point decided it's more beneficial to us as a business to not rank these independent publishers who put together really good articles, even if you're looking at something like this, who put together really good articles about amplifier brands and things like that, because what Google wants is for somebody to come in here and say, okay, what is the best amplifier brand? And I search that and we have sponsored ads up here, a YouTube video. So obviously Google owns YouTube. We have Reddit here. We have Quora here. Now, why are these all ranking higher than that? Basically, Google has decided we want and we want information from as many people as possible. So basically what we are going to do is we are going to focus on discussion forums for all of these. And we are going to downrank a lot of these articles unless you have a store on your website. So even this right here, the absolute sound.com, it looks like this is a store. So they have some pricing here. If you come in here and there is a store, then Google probably says, okay, it's more helpful because they're actually selling the products. But if your business model was built around affiliate marketing and advertising, which I understand, like Google may say that's not the best business model, but if the information is helpful, basically the only reason Google would really do this is because they end up earning more money by downvoting some of these different articles where people come in here, they may never click on a Google ad. Google has done its job by giving people a really helpful article, but Google has decided, okay, somebody comes in here, the, the best power amplifier brands in the world, and let's just say we scroll through the article, we end up not clicking anything, and we decide maybe we wanna purchase this amplifier. I go directly to amazon.com, I purchase the amplifier there, I click on an affiliate link here, I go directly to Amazon. That is basically was losing, not losing Google money, but Google could earn more money by making an exclusive deal with Reddit and training their AI and keeping people on Google longer, and then also by making sure that people stay on Google longer where they actually earn more money. So wanted to give a quick overview of the helpful content update and kind of what I thought about it and core updates in general. If you go through each of these individual core updates, there is a lot to go through. And obviously there's been a few that they've done recently. The main thing is the August 2024 core update. And this was very public with Retro Dodo. They went and visited Google. Google said, with that core update, our goal is basically to make sure that we are not hurting these independent publishers. And what we've seen is huge drop here, kind of kind of steadied a little bit, and then it went up in September. But the Retro Dodo owner, part of the reason I also made this video, just recently tweeted he's starting to see his rankings go right back down to where they were in like July and August. So they're basically saying, okay, my content... And he said, my content's been helpful, it's not helpful, it's been helpful, it's not helpful, it's been helpful, it's not helpful. So Google, with the helpful content update, the main thing that they said to everybody was, if you publish people-first content, then you are going to have a good chance of ranking. And we come over here, and this will finish off our video. Google said creating helpful, reliable, people-first content. But the problem with this is, and you can see they have all these questions that they have. And the problem with this is, is Google did not mention with this that... If you are solo and you are doing this by yourself and you are you are reviewing things by yourself, then we are going to basically downvote you because we believe that there, if there's 20 people on Reddit, they're going to have better information than that one person who has basically dedicated their life to all this information. So if you have dealt with this, leave them in the comments section if you've seen any any websites that have recovered that have seen a massive drop like this. My website, Surfside PPC, never saw a drop. So Google basically saw that as, okay, this website is informative. This website is a marketing agency. This website talks about these specific topics, but it doesn't really make sense for them to downvote me because ultimately what Google is trying to do, if somebody's searching for Google ads, there's going to be a ton of ads showing up anyway. So if you have any, any questions about this, please leave them in the comments, any additional comments. Thank you for watching. I just want to do a little bit of a rant since it's been a year since the helpful content update was released and kind of frustrating for a lot of small business owners, including myself, because I've had two websites that just got destroyed by this and revenue got destroyed from both websites by this as well. So, but yeah, if, if you're not seeing any recoveries, it, it may not be a bad idea to start a new website, build it on an e-commerce platform. Just do it on Shopify. Even if you have to drop ship some products, I think Google prefers e-commerce over affili pure affiliate websites now. And you know, not many things that we can do if, if Google's decided to blacklist our websites.